We're taking a trip on the Southern California coast to explore the charming beach cities of Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach, and Redondo Beach, all nestled in the beautiful South Bay, Los Angeles. These beach towns offer a taste of laid-back SoCal living, but each with its own unique beauty and vibe. This is a quick overview, so get your flip-flops and sunscreen, and let's get into it. Let's be like my dad and talk about the weather. <laughs> the South Bay enjoys typical Mediterranean climate with warm, dry summers and mild, wet winters. But average highs hover in the low to mid-80s from August to October, while winter months can see highs in the mid to upper 60s. And rain is concentrated in the winter months, with most areas averaging less than 15 inches a year. Sunshine is king here, with 300 days of sunshine a year, making it a haven for outdoor living almost year-round. Especially let's talk about what these beach cities have in common. They all boast stunning stretches of coastline, with golden sand and perfect waves making them, you know, a surface paradise. The weather is fantastic almost year-round, so you can enjoy the outdoor activities with plenty of opportunities to, you know, surf, play volleyball, hike, bike, skate, or hit the gym, or pick a ball, a paddle ball, a unicycle, or whatever you want to do. I'm in Manhattan Beach right now. I think it's got a little more upscale elegance whilst keeping its serious beachy vibes. And yes, I actually did say whilst. This beach town is known for its wide sandy beaches and um, sometimes calm waters, except for the winter storm swells. Pretty much perfect for near year-round surfing and volleyball or just, you know, hanging out at the beach. We're five miles south of LAX. Very convenient when you're traveling. So location is perfect. There's about 35 residents here in Manhattan Beach. Downtown Manhattan Beach is charming downtown area full of plenty of friendly boutiques, upscale art, jewelry, world-class restaurants, Downtown is located on Manhattan Beach Boulevard, west of Valley Drive to the pier. And I'd say 85 to 90 percent or so of the restaurants and shops are locally owned downtown. That's the cool part about South Bay. You know, there's not a ton of chains around. And the ones that we see are mostly just Starbucks. The Strand, which is a large paved sidewalk, really starts at the south end of the Santa Monica Bay, Redonda Beach. It's highly used by walkers, runners, bikers, skaters. It runs a little over 20 miles from the south Redonda Beach all the way north to Santa Monica. And the Strand of Manhattan Beach is split, as you can see, in separate paths. One for the wheels down here and one for the feet up here, which makes it the safest one in. In the South Bay. There are other cool places to hang out in Manhattan Beach. You could go to the end of the pier there and walk through the Roundhouse Aquarium. It's very cool. And then up to Metlock's Plaza. Then leave downtown on Highland and up north to 33rd Street. And you're in the north end where there's a few shops, but mostly restaurants there. Again, all locally owned businesses. On Sepulveda, at the top of the hill between Marine and Rosecrans, Manhattan Village is almost an outdoor mall with some indoor parts as well, but there's plenty of shopping and restaurants there. You know, on Sepulveda, there's really no residential. It's the Pacific Coast Highway, aka Highway 1, PCH, but there's a lot of restaurant bars and services there. And every one of the schools in Manhattan are top rated. Manhattan Beach has its own school district, including its own high school, Mira Costa. Manhattan Beach, or MB, as we call it, also has a ton of volleyball, weather permitting. There's always somebody out there playing or practicing volleyball. Manhattan Beach also has a couple of huge volleyball tournaments, the AVP Manhattan Beach Open, which hosts the AVP Championship right there on the sand, as well as a six-man, which is quite fun to watch. That's on the other side of the pier later. Real estate values are very strong in Manhattan Beach. It's the most expensive beach city. Currently, the lowest priced property, okay, you ready, for is a two-bedroom townhouse for $1.175 million. And the highest priced house in Manhattan Beach is currently on the Strand that way for $30 million. It's on one and a half lots, and it's just under 6,000 square feet total, with a main house built in 1922 and three guest houses. And it's that way a couple of blocks. And everything in between. If you want to live on the front row, the oceanfront, a.k.a. the Strand, the least expensive property currently is a fourplex built in 1972 for $7.5 million. Manhattan Beach pros and cons. Pros are near-perfect weather, upscale living, strong surfing, volleyball community, top-rated schools, quiet, safe neighborhoods, beautiful beach, fantastic downtown, shopping, coffee, jewelry, art, food, food, food. Cons are higher cost of living, limited nightlife options, you know, compared to Hermosa Beach. It can feel slightly less social since, you know, there's not a lot of things to do after dinner. Parking can be challenging during peak season and the rest of the year. That's about it.
What do you think? If you're looking to live in this luxurious beach retreat with a focus on outdoor activities, the beach, and an awesome downtown, Manhattan Beach might be your perfect fit. It definitely has a reputation for being affluent. Well, because it is. Now let's head to Hermosa Beach, which is literally next door to Manhattan Beach, to the south. Here the vibe shifts to a more laid-back, bohemian atmosphere. Hermosa Beach is known for its vibrant nightlife, particularly along its famous Pier Plaza, which is right behind me here, both sides, with casual beach bars, surf shops, and great restaurants and bistros. The food scene isn't as strong as in Manhattan Beach, but Hermosa has a lot of smaller places that are really on Daryl's favorite list. Hermosa Beach is a popular spot for active people who, you know, enjoy a more social scene for sure. And, oh, um, it's only a mile and a half square, has about 16,000 residents. If you're on the Strand, you see tons of people walking, running, riding, skating, and everything in between every day. This is where I do most of my walking, right here. It's a beautiful place to be. There are almost no chains in downtown Hermosa Beach. Just about all are locally owned businesses. Also in Hermosa Beach, there's a large volleyball community. The ABP also has a tournament just right behind me on the sand there. And every 4th of July, Hermosa Beach hosts the Hermosa Beach Ironman. The Hermosa Ironman consists of a mile-long run on the beach, a mile-long paddle in the ocean, and then you pound a six-pack of beer immediately after getting out of the water without throwing up. As you can imagine, this is quite an event, and it's a tradition held close to the hearts of us locals. It's widely attended. Hermosa Beach also has a strong surfing community at some of the epic surf competitions throughout the year. And there's a skate park downtown so you can practice. It has also its own school district with top-notch schools, all three of them. They own TK to eighth grade, and you get to pick what public high school you go to. You can either go to Manhattan Beach's Miracosta or Redondo Beach High School. While real estate values are a bit lower than Manhattan Beach, they're still high. Currently, the lowest priced property is a one one bath condo, six hundred seventy-five thousand. The highest price house in Hermosa Beach is currently on the Strand for twenty million seven hundred thousand. It's a double wide lot, and the least expensive property on the Strand is a triplex built in nineteen fifty-three for six point five million. Hermosa Beach pros and cons: pros, near perfect weather, yay, vibrant nightlife, strong surfing and volleyball community, active and social atmosphere. It's always fun to walk on the pier. And it also has the perfect beach. Cons are it's more crowded than Manhattan Beach. Parking be a challenge, especially during peak season. And the rest of the year, just like all the other ones, it's got a smaller downtown. And there's less dining options of the three beach cities. High cost of living is everywhere. And there's no high school. That's all I can think about. Are we having fun yet? If you are, please give this a little like. And if you're loving it, please subscribe for you know, more videos like this one and other South Bay subjects. Let's look at the Redondo Beach. It's the largest of the three beach cities. Here you get a mix of family, friendly, fun, and a decent stretch of beach that comes with all of that. And if you're brave, you can hang out at the pier. Redondo Beach Pier is a flurry of activity. They offer a variety of restaurants and shops, skateboard park, weekly outdoor yoga, and summer concerts. It's a great place to grab some fresh seafood, take a boat tour, simply soak up the ocean, and marina views because Redondo Beach is also home of King Harbor. They have whale watching tours, and sport fishing charters, stand-up paddle riddles, yacht clubs, and more. In the what were they thinking department, Redondo has made some various weird zoning decisions in their past. For instance, they tore down their downtown area and built King Harbor in the marina in the 60s, which means Redondo Beach doesn't have any areas like the downtowns of Hermosa Beach and Manhattan Beach to the north. The only densely packed restaurant and retail area is the Riviera Village in South Redondo. There you'll find a lot of great restaurants and galleries and boutiques, and you can park and walk to. But ever since COVID, Redondo Beach decided to keep the outdoor dining decks in the Riv Village, which is one of their best decisions ever, because that place is hopping. Redondo Beach, the largest of the three beach cities, has a population of approximately 71,000 people and its own school district. Now, I keep mentioning that because you probably don't want to get involved with LA Unified School District. They don't have the best reputation overall. Redondo has eight elementary schools and two middle schools, and of course, the Redondo Beach High School, which I already mentioned. Real estate values near the coast are always going to be higher than inland. Have you noticed how beautiful it is here at the beaches? 
Um, also, the coastal weather is pretty mild compared to further inland. Right now it's June, it's 70 degrees, and it's sunny. Even five miles in is probably 100 degrees. So it's just different. Currently, the least expensive property in Redonda Beach is a one-bedroom, one-bath condo for 519000 The most expensive property in Redonda Beach proper is a four-bedroom, three-and-a-half-bath new construction attached townhouse. That's one block to the beach in the avenues just off the Esplanade right over there. It's 3,000 square feet, and it's going for $4.75 million. That's $1,500 per square foot for those of you playing along at home. Now, North Redonda Beach is one to three miles from the beach because it's east of South Redonda, Hermosa Beach, and Manhattan Beach. Just think of it as wrapping around the other three. North Redondo has the lowest real estate values of the rest of the beach cities because of its location a little bit further off the coast. So if you're looking for a better value, North Redondo Beach is your jam. It's my friend Gary. Say hi to Gary. That guy can play the blues harp like nobody. Just saying. Okay, so Redonda Beach pros and cons. Pros, near perfect weather, of course. See the pattern? It's the most affordable option among the three beach cities. Even more so in North Redondo, like I mentioned. And a lot of surfing and volleyball also. The Riviera Village is just that way. It's a great hang from sun up to after dinner. And the marina is perfect for boating, paddling, and activities, and fishing enthusiasts, of course. Cons would probably be a super crowded beach during summer because there's two large parking lots next to the beach at the pier. One's right there and one's right behind me. It's more crowded because there's more parking and it can feel touristy at this pier compared to the other two because of the pier having the parking lot and stores and things like that. And it's more accessible than the other beach cities. Uh, us locals don't go to this pier. Unless we go to Old Tony's for a cocktail, it can be a little bit rough at the pier, especially after dark. And the uh, traffic is heavy, especially during t- tourist season. And South Redondo is the furthest away from all the freeways. North Redondo is the closest because it's that way. So what do you think? The beauty of South Bay Los Angeles is that you have a variety of beach communities to choose from and neighborhoods in each with its own distinct personality, which is great. If you love upscale living and a vibrant food and small downtown scene, Manhattan Beach might be your perfect fit. Maybe you're more interested in a laid back vibe with some great restaurants bars and shops with some nightlife, volleyball, surfing that's never too crowded. Hermosa Beach awaits you. You're seeking a mix of a way more shops and restaurants and bars mixed with some beach life while having a little lower cost of living than Hermosa Beach or Manhattan Beach. Well, then Redonda Beach has your name on it. Which beach city is right for you? Well, you'll have to decide that. Let me know your favorites in the comments below or just reply back. Also, it's the same thing if you have any questions about how to live in the South Bay. And please share this with a friend. Or an enemy, it's your choice. More laid back, bohemian atmosphere, at- bohemian, bohemian atmosphere. Oh, shit. Oh, God.